Y'all like that music, don't you? Rock it out. Yes, I approved of that music, just so you'll know. Praise God. I'm so excited. I'm excited for several reasons. Several reasons. The first of all is that the Lord is in this place. Isn't that awesome? God's in this place. I don't know if you know, but the Holy Spirit's thick in here. That's the best I can describe it. So if you walk out of those doors and you don't know Jesus, oh, bad for you. I want you to come see me before you leave. I'll give you an opportunity before you leave today. It's my prayer that you'll find Jesus, okay? Because he is everything, everything. I'm really excited because we're also starting a new uh, two-week series. Two weeks. Can you believe it? I'm not doing an eight-week. I'm doing a two. Unbelievable. It's the speed values. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. And the third reason I'm super excited, not the, not the last, is because we have a special guest with us today. Uh, he and his wife, amazing people. Um, I can't say enough about them. Pastors, uh, Pastor Eddie and his wife, Lynn Cox, are here. Can you give it up for them? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Just so you'll know, without those guys, we wouldn't be here. Okay, without those two right there. And I, I'd actually, I'm trying not to cry right now. I was actually sitting down there thinking, what God's done. I want to say thank you. He probably knew that was going to happen because he sees me cry a lot. Okay. <laughs> I am so thankful. Oh my goodness, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for you guys, what God's done. And we're actually talking about several things. And, and if you want to know uh, somebody who influenced me, absolutely amazing. My, one, of, one of my mentors, one of, one of my favorite most unbelievable, awesome, godly mentor is Eddie Cox over here, Eddie and Lynn. So, so you make sure you see him today. Hug him, shake their hands, let them know. You honor them, and we need to honor them because they are amazing. We would not be here. My wife and I, they have had so much influence on us. Uh, we've been here 13 and a half years, but we've been going with Marathon for a long time, Marathon Church. And I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about you a little bit, if that's all right, both of you. I'm going to talk about them in just a little bit. Uh, but we're on, we're on our, our values, our values here at Velocity, what we're about. We call them speed. I'm going to go through them quickly with you, and then I'm going to uh, focus on two key ones today, okay? S, okay, we call it speed, speed. I hope you like speed in a car. Uh, I ho hope you like speed going uh, down the road, of course, and then I hope you like speed going with God. That's a great thing. The other kind of speed, you know, whatever, you, that kind of stuff, don't do that, okay? You might be thinking of some drugs. I watched Slide PD last night, if that helps you out, okay? Uh, but speed with God is a great thing. And so S is share your story. S is share your story. P is power to serve. P is power to serve. We're going to talk about those two today. E is enjoy God. Next week we'll be talking about enjoy God. And then we'll also be talking about the next E is excited to give. Excited to give. And then D is do life together do life together. All those are absolutely huge. And I always say this, if you want to grow as a Christian, you start doing those speed values, you'll see your life change in an amazing way. Speed. Amazing. So I want to talk about share your story. I think it's absolutely huge for every one of us to share our story. If you know Jesus, okay, you have a story. If you've invited him into your life, you're going to follow him. You have a story. You have a story when you met him. You have a story what God's doing in your life now. You have a story about growing. You have a story about what God's been teaching you. You have some kind of story that's absolutely amazing. And somebody needs to hear your story. And you say, but everybody's got a story, Reg. But nobody has a story exactly like you. Because you're uniquely made. You are you. God created you with a purpose. God created you uniquely you. That's, that's you. You're very significant. Some of you came today. You didn't realize uh, how much God loves you. Will you hear that now? God loves you more than you could ever imagine. You came in insecure. Well, God can fill that up. You came in distressed. God can help you with that. You came in in debt. God can help you with that. You came in relationships messed up. God will help you with that. God says you are his masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do good works. We're to honor him, but we got to see ourselves how God sees us. And so if you have, uh, if you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have a story. I love to share my story with people. Okay, I love to hear other people share their story. As a matter of fact, in Psalm uh, chapter 71, what does it say? I will tell everyone about your righteousness all day long. I will proclaim your saving power. Though I am not skilled with words, I will praise your mighty deeds, O sovereign Lord. I will tell everyone that you alone are just. 
Oh God, you have taught me from my earliest childhood, and I constantly tell others about the wonderful things that you do. Now that I'm old and gray, do not abandon me. Oh God, let me proclaim your power to this new generation. Let me say that again. Let me proclaim your power to this new generation, your mighty miracles to all who come after me. May we do that. That's up to us to pass on what God's doing with us, who Jesus is, how great he is, who God is, pointing to God's word, but it's up to us to share our story. And so I started thinking, who in here would be amazing that has a really cool story and maybe doesn't even talk that much? But when he, when he talks, he has something to say. He's an amazing friend of mine. Many of you know him. One of the hardest workers I've ever met. Uh, and his name is BJ. BJ. So maybe you hadn't heard his story, but I want you to hear it now. Take a listen. My name is BJ Harrison, and this is my story. Uh, growing up, we went to church for a, you know, a long while. But around the age of, uh, I guess, 16, 17, we kind of... So by the time I started driving, it was just, you know, more about going out and having fun and just running the roads. And uh, later on in life, I got married. I've got a great wife uh, and a awesome little boy. But uh, we had been a long while without even you know, thinking about coming to church. And we got invited by uh, Bubba and Michelle. And uh, so we, we kind of thought it over for a little while. And then we was actually riding by one day coming back from somewhere and I told my wife I said uh I said you know try them out our first visit was Easter Sunday I think it was 2013 you know we didn't really know anybody uh we were just kind of you know sitting there we knew Bob and Michelle but here comes you know Reggie out here and he has got a big piece of wood on the stage he started you know kind of taking little chunks out of it and talking about, you know, that's pieces of your life missing. And uh, then he started taking bigger chunks and bigger chunks. And I say he finally you know, broke out a chainsaw and took a big chunk out of the thing. And all I can think is, you know, that sounds about right. It's like, you know, little pieces of your life are gone. And uh, without God, you know, them pieces are not coming back together. So me and my wife that day, we, you know, got saved and, uh, I think it was about a year later, we both got baptized, and then a little while later after that, uh, my little boy got uh, baptized. It was just a great moment that I think it, me and her both realized that you know, this, is, this is what we need in our life. And uh, we've been here ever since, and you know, we love everybody here. And before Jesus, my life was kind of hectic, you know, not real structured and just kind of just went anywhere that, and I didn't know where it was going. And after uh, we're more settled down, uh, a little bit better communication skills and a lot less the anger part, you know, just thank God for everything we have. And we pray about a lot of stuff too. <laughs> Give it up for BJ. You know what I love about BJ is he's authentic. He is real. He and his wife, real people, amazing people. And uh, so, so go encourage him today afterwards. Um, yes, I did have a big stick of wood on stage. Uh, I had an ax on stage that day. And then I did have a chainsaw. Seems like people get saved when I pull chainsaws out. I'm not, I don't, I don't understand why. I like that kind of stuff. The only problem was, uh, one of the ladies, I think, that I hit with some shavings uh, was pointed directly to them during that Easter service. But uh, that was a fun day. It was a fun day. So thank you, BJ, for sharing your story. And I'll encourage you to share your story. If you noticed, uh, it took a little while, but about a year later, they got baptized. They went far and said, hey, I want the world to know Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Um, and BJ does some amazing things around here. Uh, he and his dad... Uh, they serve on campus here. They help us out uh, during the week. They cut grass, and, and I don't know if you know this, but we have a lot, a lot, a lot of grass. And he and his dad, they come and they serve and they uh, make a difference uh, with the grounds and behind here and the triangle and all those things. And so you, you're talking about a hard worker, a guy who makes a difference, uh, BJ. And so thank you, thank you for serving as well. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is, is serving. 
is serving because BJ not only showed, so, um, told his story, but now he serves. And what does it say in Galatians 5? You, my brothers and sisters, you were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly, humbly in God, humbly, humbly in love. And so I was thinking about serving and thinking about uh, why, why do people serve? And some of you in here serve. Some of you hadn't figured that out, how good it is. And so I started looking a little bit, and I wanted you to know uh, the benefits of helping other people. Why, why do you think it would be good to, to volunteer? Why would it be good to serve? And so I started doing a little bit of research uh, and listening to, looking at some of the scientists and seeing what some of the scientists were saying about serving. So when you serve your time or your money or your energy to help other people, it doesn't just make the world better, but it also makes you better. The very act of giving back to other people, giving back to God, it boosts your happiness, it boosts your health, and it boosts your sense of well-being. That's pretty good, isn't it? You think about, what, what, what can I gain from this? Is that, is, that, is that a bad thing? What can I gain? I'll talk about that in a minute. Helping others can, can help you live longer. You want to expand your life so you can assist in a soup kitchen, you can coach a basketball team, you can help your neighbor, you can, and we're going to give you several ways, even at Velocity, that you'll be able to serve. You can go feed the homeless, you can go uh, serve on a Sunday morning, we'll talk about that. But research has shown that those kind of activities can improve health in many ways that actually lengthen your lifespan. It helps you, anybody in here have any stress? Raise your hand. Have any stress? Okay, go serve somebody. It can help you manage your stress. It can help you stave off disease. You go to the doctor and they say, you got all these diseases. Goodness, how, how do you help that? One of the ways is go, go serve somebody. It can help have a reduced rates of depression. You don't have to raise your hand for that, but I know a lot of folks that have depression and a lot of folks that go through a lot of stuff. And so how, how can you uh, uh, get well? One of the ways is to go serve someone. It has, you can have an increased sense of life satisfaction. And it says when, they, when you serve somebody on a regular basis, okay, it alleviates the loneliness and it enhances your social life. One of the things Satan likes to do to us is he likes to get us alone. He likes to isolate us. He likes us to think that everybody hates us, nobody likes me, and I'm going to go eat worms. Have you done that? Y'all know that song, don't you? You don't want to hear me sing it. But how, how, many, how many people say that? Everybody hates me, nobody likes me. So I'm just going to go off and hide. And Satan says, if I can get you to hide, I've, I've won. Because you you're isolated. You're alone. You're by yourself. You don't have any social folks. You don't have anybody else to care. You feel like nobody cares about me. And then you get to the point, you, you, you start saying, God doesn't care about me. And nobody likes me. And it's just a downward spiral. spiral. So we've got to say, God, I want to serve someone. I want to help other people. Show me where that needs to be. Another reason is that it's contagious. When you perform a good deed, it can cause a chain reaction with other people. One study found that people are more likely to perform feats of generosity after observing somebody else do the same. How many times have you been in the drive-thru and somebody pays for your meal and you think, hey, that was pretty cool. I'll pay for the next guy's meal and the next person and the next person. And then it comes to you. And then you say, oh, I got a free meal today. I don't care about them. <laughs> Hopefully you don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Let's go to the next person. How can, I, how can I have that ripple effect throughout a community, a ripple effect throughout a church that we can affect the, 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 this entire area? Do you believe we can do that? Absolutely. Helping others, being, serving, helps, help, it makes us happy. Sociologists tracked over 2,000 people over a five-year period, found that Americans who described themselves as very happy volunteered, served at least 5.8 hours per month. That's not too bad, is it? Six hours to help somebody? You get in there, you might want to do more. Helping other people, serving other people may help with chronic pain. I, I guarantee you in a crowd this size, there's some folks in here who have some chronic pain. According to one study, people who suffered from chronic pain tried working as peer volunteers. As a result, they experienced a reduction in their own symptoms. Helping other people lowers blood pressure. Can you imagine serving someone lowers your blood pressure? One piece of research showed that older individuals who volunteered for at least 200 hours a year decreased their risk of hypertension by a whopping 40%. So serve somebody, get off the pills. It's a good thing. How about this? For teens, helping others promotes positive behaviors in teens. According to sociologists, teenagers who volunteer have better grades and self-image. Self-image. And when you realize how much God loves you, that'll give you a self, great self-image too, when you start realizing that. 
Helping others gives us a sense of purpose and satisfaction. Oh my goodness, it just keeps going and keeps going. So why should we serve? There's some reasons right there. That's what the scientific community says. That's what the sociologists say. But what does Jesus say? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 20, 26 through 28, anyone wanting to be a leader among you must be your servant. And if you want to be right at the top, then you must serve like a slave. Your attitude must be like my own, for I, the Messiah, did not come to be served, but what? But to serve. Your attitude must be like your own. He says, for I, the Messiah, did not come to be served. So if Jesus left the throne of heaven and came down here to serve, how much, how much uh, more important it is that we follow his example and we serve? It's pretty amazing, isn't it? You think around the people around you that need somebody to care about them. You think about all the people around you that need somebody to add value to them. Somebody today needs your smile. Somebody today needs your encouragement. Somebody today needs your hug. Somebody today is waiting on somebody. Hopefully somebody's going to care about them. And that could change their life forever. It's amazing what a text will do. It's amazing what a phone call will do. It's amazing what a letter will do. It's amazing what a lunch with someone will do. It change the course of history. It can change a lot, can't it? So the, the, these two verses I just read... But among you, the one who serves you best will be your leader. So these are the foundation of, for Christian leadership. Jesus said the, op he said the exact opposite of what the world says about what a real leader is. In the world, you build a pyramid, you climb to the top. But Jesus said, no, he who serves best does what? Leads best. He who serves best leads best. So I'm going to give you... Several reasons that we serve other people, besides what all the scientists and the sociologists say, let's come back to God's Word. We were created to serve others. You can write that down. We were created to serve other people. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, It is God Himself who has made us what we are and given us new lives from Christ Jesus. And long ago, He planned that you and I, that we should spend these lives in helping others. Wow, long ago. It says, God knew you before the foundation of the world. Before you are in your mother's womb, God knew you. Isn't that amazing? And God planned a life of service for you. And I believe one reason why so many people are miserable today is because they missed the point in life. There's a lot of miserable people. Would you say that? You put on the news, a lot of miserable people. You don't put, there's a lot, of, a lot of crazy things happening. But if you stay away from that enough and you start realizing, hey, God, God used me to impact this world around here, who around me needs help? I don't necessarily have to go to Africa. If God calls you to Africa, you go. If God calls you to India, you go. That's great. But I believe God's given us a place around here, too, that has a lot of people who need a lot of help and a lot of prayer. God planned a life of service for you. As we serve other people, our own needs are met. And as we give our life away, we find it. You and I, we're created to serve, for service. Have you ever gone and done something nice for somebody? For some of you, it might have been a long time. I don't know. But when you go do something nice for somebody and you start thinking about somebody else, it, it lifts your spirits. It helps you go, oh, man. It makes you feel good about yourself, doesn't it? It's amazing. It's amazing. We're created for service. Second thing I want you to write down is it proves that you and I belong to Christ. Romans chapter 7, verse 4 says, You are the body of Christ. And now you belong to him in order that we might be useful in the service of God. God says the way that you know that you're a part of the body of Christ is that you serve other people. And I started going, I started thinking about all the folks around me who had a, a major impact on serving other people. And I go back to, I always go back to my family, y'all know that. Why? Because they raised me, they loved me, they cared for me, I saw them. It's amazing how much influence that you have on your children and your, t and your teenagers, you, it's amazing the impact that you and I have on those who are young. Why? Because hopefully they don't know it all yet. Sometimes they act like they do, right? But they don't, and they're looking, and they're, they're being influenced. And so I started thinking about family, and I went through my entire family. I, I started thinking about my Aunt Nell and Patsy. Maybe you've never heard of them. They're, 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 my Aunt Nell, she's gone on to be with, with God. And my cousin Patsy, she's still around. But when I was little... They used to come early, and when the church, when they were prepared, I don't know what the blinking is, but uh, God's with us, okay? He's with us. So I, I just know that they would come early, and they would fill it. You know, in the Methodist church, we had the little tiny communion cups, 
and they would come early and they would fill those cups up and they would do what's necessary and they would put the sheet over and I always thought a dead body was under there scared me to death of the Lord's Supper but I, I just remember mom would talk about they're, they're going early they're setting things up and I thought man that's a lot and every time they would go early and that seems like they were the ones that did it then I thought about my grandma uh, I don't know what you call your grandma it might be nanny might be me okay might be grandma, I don't, I don't know, everybody's got crazy names, but I, I told you mine's the best, nanny ma. And my nanny ma loved other people. But she was always doing something for the other people. She was always leading different things at church. She was pulling people over to her house. She was calling and checking on people. She was going to see somebody in the hospital. She didn't leave it up to the pastor. She did it. And she pulled other women together, and she was always checking on those ladies that lived not too far around her. Or if they didn't, then she'd go see them. But she was always thinking about, how can I serve somebody else? pretty amazing my aunt my aunt Ann, who's gone on to be with God I started thinking about her in my life listen if she could if she could get somebody to go with her that's what she wanted she would say come go with, go go with me I'll take you out I'll buy your lunch why so she could listen to you because she wanted to find out about you she wanted to she had that listening ear how can I help somebody else and I thought about my grandpa Grandpa was always building stuff, fixing stuff. If it wasn't helping the neighbor, it was helping something at church, building something at church, fixing things. He was a master carpenter. Pretty, pretty amazing when I learned from him. Then I thought, I thought about my dad. My dad, he goes and visits the shut-ins, and he'd go back then, it would go give him a cassette tape. Y'all remember those things? Y'all remember what they are? And he would go and he'd take me with him. And I, I'll, I'll never forget this one time. He took me with him, and, and he knew this lady wasn't doing very well. And, and he said, you, you stay back. And he went up, and, and I remember the lady, uh, an elderly lady, uh, he, she died in his arms. And I thought he was there at just the right moment, and my dad had just enough sense to tell me to stay in the car. He went to go check on this older lady, and she, she passed away. And that just is imprinted in my mind. This daddy, my dad cared about those ladies. He cared about the shut-ins, the men, whoever it was. Pretty amazing. I go to my mom. She was always fixing stuff. She was always, how can I uh, make a banner for the church? You know, that was her deal. We don't do banners here, okay? But she was trying to figure out, and she would stay up late, and she would work months and, and, and months to get a banner made and sing and the cantatas and all those things. See, God put around me a wonderful pillar of a, a lot of people who serve God, and I got to see their lives, and I know what a, dis what a difference that it makes when you serve someone else. Because every one of us, what does it say? God says the way that you know you're a part of the body of Christ is that you serve other people. So we're all a part of the body. Is that right? And every member counts. I want you to think about your body. Have you ever whacked your finger with a hammer and said, God bless you, love you, thank you, you said those wonderful things? It's amazing how you hit a thumb or you hit a pinky and then you go, oh man, and then it hurts and it continues to hurt and then maybe you do the same thing like you ever, three days later you pop it again. You ever try to go without one thumb and you go, wow, I really need that thumb. You ever had a hand hurt or an arm hurt and you have to go without that arm or that hand for about a week? You really miss that arm, don't you? You ever had a pinky toe get squished and you go, oh man, I can hardly walk. Isn't it crazy? You ever had a heart make a couple of flutters and go, oh, I call it pinging. You ever had a pinging heart? If so, you need to go to the emergency room, okay? I've had a pinging heart. I don't like that. I'm like, ooh, this thing needs to work. I look over my wife and say, honey, will you pray for me? Pray for me. She's done the same thing. You ever had your head not work right? Go ahead and elbow the person next to you and say, yeah, your head doesn't work right. You go ahead and do that. <laughs> Listen, my wife says, you think that a lot, don't you? Your head just doesn't seem like it works right. You ever had that? You ever had a passing out spell? I did. Lord, help us. That's a horrible feeling when you don't use a, I don't have control. That's a horrible thing. Here's what I'm trying to say. Every part of your body matters, doesn't it? Every part. You don't want anything hurt. You want it all good. Same thing happens here. Every part matters. There's not one thing better than another. You know what this guy over here used to tell me, Mr. Eddie Cox? He said, they don't care a thing that I say up here he said they care they care those people and those first timers came today welcome i'm glad you're here whoever you are i love you love you love you you guys care what happened to you from the parking lot all the way in we got to get back to where we care about those people as soon as they open those doors and they come up those steps and we have some folks feed them uh, feed them somebody greet them <laughs> feed them too we'll feed you too here we love we love food amen 
We'll give you some coffee. Yes, we'll give you some coffee. We want to show you around. We want you to know that you matter here. Oh, my goodness. And so every position matters. Every service area matters. Even those folks, listen, and you, some people say, well, I don't know if I could do that. Yeah, you can. God created you to serve. And we're going to help you. If you haven't served before, we want to help you. We want you to sign up. Think about what you might like, and we'll help place you in the right spot. And if you don't like that, we'll get you in another spot. But it, it, it proves that we belong to Christ. You're a part of the body of Christ. We also serve God by serving others. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, 24 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for men. It is the Lord that you are serving. No matter what you're doing, who you're doing it for, you're doing it for God, right? Matthew 25, 40, Jesus said, What you have done for the humblest of my brothers, you've done for me. He states it positively. If you feed and clothe others, then you feed and clothe me. If you haven't fed and clothed others, then you haven't fed and clothed me. For the greatest honor is to serve the Lord. The greatest honor is to serve the Lord. In the small things, guys, what about, what about somebody, you say, well, what about somebody that, that serves, uh, cleans the toilets? I believe if Jesus was living today, he'd be cleaning the toilets. You say, how do you know that? Because I know an amazing God who left the throne of heaven to come down here, live and be born as a, as a tiny little infant and grow in wisdom and stature, and he was willing to go all the way to the cross for you and for me. He'd be willing to clean the toilet, wouldn't he? He'd be willing to do what's necessary to help take care of our students. He'd be willing to do what's necessary to help, to help take care of our children. Because every part matters. There's not one part more important than another. These guys back here at the production booth, man, I'm so thankful for them. If we don't have them, whoo, everything messes up. Every part matters. We owe, we owe God everything. Romans 12, 1 says, Because of God's great mercy to us, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to His service and pleasing to Him. So there's no sacrifice that you and I can make for Him that would ever compare to what God has done for us. Did you hear that? I'm going to tell you about a story real quick uh, in, in Mark chapter 10, verse 35 through 45. Listen to this. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, the sons of Zebedee came over to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do us a favor. What is your request, he asked. They replied, when you sit on your glorious throne, we want to sit in places of honor next to you. One on your right, other on your left. Would you like that? I heard that. I read that. I was like, that's pretty cool. I like that. You like that? I want to sit on the drive beside Jesus. That would be awesome. But Jesus said to them, you don't know what you're asking. And you, are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering that I'm about to drink? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism of suffering that I must be baptized with? And really quick, they went and thinking what they say. Oh, yes, they replied. We're able. We can handle that. Then Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup and be baptized with my baptism of suffering, but I have no right to say who will sit on my right or left, for God has prepared those places for the ones that he has chosen. All that's, all that's huge. You want to go back and do some homework? Mark chapter 10, starting with verse 35. Then, I'm gonna, then I want to read verse 41, says, When the ten other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. They didn't like that. What are they doing? So Jesus called them together, and he said, You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people, and officials flaunt authority over those under them. Starting at verse 43, But among you, among us, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among us must be your servant. Did you hear that? Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. But to give his life as a ransom for many. So what is he saying? You want to be great? You want to be great? You want to do great things for the kingdom? You want to be great in the kingdom? What do you do? Serve. Who you ever heard it like that? Oh my goodness, you want to be great in the kingdom? Absolutely. I got to use it again because Jeff, you can't beat Jeff's deal. Where you at, Jeff? Jeff said, I'm going to be a little closer at the, at the front of the buffet line, right? can't beat that i think there are amazing things that are going to happen in heaven because you and i 
said, you know what, God? I want to be great in your kingdom. I want to do amazing things. Well, he said, well, go serve. If you want to be the greatest, go serve. Go serve a lot of people. Go care about a lot of people. Help a lot of people. Do what God's called you to do. Use the gifts and the talents that God's given you. Not everybody can greet. Not everybody can preach. Not everybody can clean. Not everybody can work with the kids. Not everybody can work with the students. But God's given you gifts and talents that you need to find out. That God's given you so that you can become everything God created you to become and do the things he's called you to do because somebody else out there is counting on you. I want to be great in the kingdom? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you mean I can do more? Absolutely. You ask God. Get jacked up. Get fired up. I told you some of the things that my my family did. Can you do greater things? Absolutely. Do what God's called you to do. God, what do you want me to do? Well, I'm going to give you that opportunity in just a few minutes. I want you to think about it. So what did he say? For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. You know, who, you know who read that verse a lot? This guy over here named Eddie Cox and his wife, Lynn. You know what they did? You know what they modeled for me and my wife over and over? They were our singles leader. Did you know they served so many people? You know how many mission trips we went on? We, 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 we couldn't sleep. They had us popping everywhere. <laughs> we went everywhere. We were doing stuff all the time, and it was around this area. It wasn't any place far. I mean, I mean, there's so many churches we went to. We were in North Greenville. I remember somebody, 18 kids got saved on that. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, you remember that? Girl had lice too, didn't she? Remember that? That's right. <laughs> you remember those kind of things. Woo! She had a great scream, by the way, and 18 people got saved. And I remember going to, to, to Marathon, Florida, you guys. Man, we did a mission trip to Marathon, Florida. That's how Marathon got birthed too, wasn't it? Yeah, amazing, wonderful thing. Serve, 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 serve. What do they do? Serve, serve, serve. Took us on. They took us to Wayflow and Gatlinburg. Y'all love Gatlinburg. Pigeon Fords. Amen. Yeah. This guy loves brownies. You want to bless him, get some brownies, okay? <laughs> All this is coming back. And so, so yesterday, my wife and I, with our daughter, we drove to the old marathon back at the warehouse on 123. I don't know if anybody went there. Probably two or three of you did. We drove up. Man, all these floods of memories came back. Oh, my goodness. Jim Moran over there. Yeah, Warren. Tracy. Yeah. Yeah, there, look at this. a lot of you. A lot of you. You know what? I, all those floods of, of, of serving, and I started thinking about it. I told my wife, I said, you remember those tables? We lined up tables, and we had like a service fair and all these people, and then I went and looked at the, looked at the, uh, the parking lot, and I started looking at all the, the, the places we were trying to park everybody. We didn't have enough room for parking in that, in that complex. Going all the way down to the bottom. Why? Because a couple right here chose to serve and honor God and say, we'll do whatever it takes. Heard that a lot. We'll do whatever it takes. And they did whatever it took. And he invested into me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mm, Yeah, give it up again for them. Uh, Yeah, amen. Mm. Mm. Thank you, God. So here's what I want you to do. Here's the challenge for today. Challenge is, what are you going to do? You're never more like Jesus than when you serve. Y'all hear this? You're never more like Jesus. Get this in your brain. You're never more like Jesus than when you serve someone. What do we say here? Love God, love people? Never more like Jesus than when you love God. Never more like Jesus when you love people and you serve them. Never more like Jesus when you serve. You've got to let that ring. Never more like Jesus. So I want you to take this. You should have one of these in your seat. Take a look at it. Everybody take a look. It's got the service team sign-up info. We don't have white tables and all that out there, but we have it right here. And I want you to think about, look at all these different teams. Ushers help people find a seat. VIP team. Help, help show people in. You got you to not mind talking to people and loving people and showing them and figuring out what's going on. You got the safety team. We're going to be having that. Uh, the, the cleaning team. Okay, we just talked about things need to be clean, all the landscaping outside. Kids, I want to I I squat on this one for a second. I just want you to think about it. Kids, are they important? Do you really care about them? Okay, then, then you know what? I can't wait till Michelle comes and tells me we have so many people serving that we had to have teams and rotations of teams in the, in the kids' department. If we say they matter, then if you're good with kids, okay, 
then then you need to sign up on here sign up and, and drop it in these give boxes right here so you can get plugged in. If you're good at hanging out with students and teaching students or just be, the presence is a lot, then you need to look at that. Production team. If you're detailed, you like detailed stuff, back here in the back. There's all those teams there, and there's, there's some more that aren't even listed. But there's a lot of things going on here at Velocity. And the challenge is, what are you going to do with what God's given you? You're never more like Jesus than when you what? What are you going to do? Oh, okay, let's say that again. So what are we going to do? Sure. Amen. Do we want to reach this community for Jesus? Yes. Yeah, are we, are we located in an amazing spot to reach Taylors? Yes. Amazing spot to reach TR? Yes. Amazing spot to reach Greer? Yes. How about Cherrydale? Yes. And what are we going to do? Sure. And we're going to sign up. Yes. We're going to sign up. Because yes. if we say stuff and we don't do stuff, we don't need to be hearers only. We need to be, what does the Bible say? Doers of the... Doers of the, whoa, that's good. You say, all the places are filled. And I'm going to say, are you crazy? But it looks so good on Sunday morning. It can always get better, can it? It can always get better. Don't think that you're not needed. Hear the pastor say, whoo, sign up right here. Now, would I be the guy that needs to keep your kids? Absolutely not. <laughs> but could I, if I had to, Stay in there for an hour? Yes, I could. For one hour. Yes, I could. <laughs> one. That's it. One. But you need to find what you love to do. I showed you BJ. What does BJ love to do? He loves to work outside. He loves to cut grass. Some of you love to clean. You like to clean your house. You come clean my house. That'd be great. My wife and I, yes. No, but how about cleaning the church? Okay. There are so many areas. So if you're not sure, put, I don't know. And we'll, listen, Tim... I, listen, Tim's been here almost five months. Our new executive guy, he's doing a great job, isn't he? Yeah, okay. So here's what's really cool. God brought us a guy who's amazing at communications, okay? And he's really amazing at personality. And he's going to help you find the right spot to help you serve. Isn't that cool? Let me tell you. I'm telling you, God is, he is assembling the team in an amazing way. And I am so thankful what he's doing here at Velocity. Now, I could talk forever, but i got to shut up because you got to eat. So here's what we want to do. <laughs> I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes, and I want you to pray about this. Okay? And I'm going to give those in here who haven't received Jesus, I'm going to give you an opportunity. If you want to find the, the, the amazing King of Kings and Lord of Lords that loves you more than you can ever imagine, he is here. Do not leave without knowing him. Oh, my goodness. So I'm going to pray for the Christians first, and then I'm going to give you guys, anybody who doesn't know Jesus, a chance to receive him, and I'd love to meet you afterwards. You go through those double doors and meet me. God is in this place today, okay? Let's talk to him. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for the people that have invested in us. Thank you so much for the people who've gone before us, the people who've prayed, the people who have worked, the people who have cared, the people who have added value and added encouragement, and all those things that so many people have done because that we're here today because of that. We thank you for that, God. We give you praise and thanks for how great you are. And yes, we want to be great in the kingdom. Yes, we want to do amazing things for you. Yes, we do, and we want to serve. So God, is, as people are thinking right now, and as they're praying right now, what would you have them to do? I, I pray that you'd take away confusion. I pray that you'd make it very clear what box they need to check because it's absolutely huge. And we're going to give you praise, and we, we're going we're to ask for your help because we need help and wisdom. Please give us wisdom. There's also some here, God, that do not know you, and I know you know that. And I, right now, any of those people who don't know you that want to ask Jesus Christ as Lord and their Savior to come in their life, you don't know everything that means, but it just means I'm going to follow Jesus. I don't know everything, but I know he came and died on the cross. He rose from the dead so that I could have life. If you're one of those people, does anybody just lift their hand and say, I, I'm one of those people, I want Jesus to come in. I want to follow him. Does anybody just, yeah, there you go, man. Praise God. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so if you'll pray this prayer with me, Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on a cross for me. And thank you for living for me. And I ask that you come in and change me. I ask that you make me brand new. Brand new. And I want to follow you all the days of my life. And may I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
And then you can tell God again, thank you for loving me. And you can say, thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. And all the people said, amen. They're about to sing another song, so here's what I'm going to ask you to do. After you fill out those cards that you have, I want you to drop those in our give boxes. boxes. We have at least three of them located throughout the campus. Drop them in there. Someone will call you this week. Okay, we're going to get in touch with you. Great things are happening at Velocity, aren't they? Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to sing one more song, and I want you to add value to somebody today. Love on somebody today. Go see Eddie and Lynn. Love on them too, okay? Let's have a great service. Finish it up. Would you guys stand with us for this last song? so much for joining us in worship this morning. Again, if you have a serve card that you filled out or a connection card, if you're new here, need prayer, um, feel free to use these give boxes around our campuses or drop those in. And if you're a first timer, we would love to get to know you a little bit. So meet us back there in VIP. We've got a little gift for you just for being here. So y'all have a wonderful week. Thanks for joining us.